Let's uh, take you back to the United States uh, for now, though. Larry Shover from Efficient Capital Management is in the house, as it were. Uh, Larry, let's talk about U.S. rates first off uh, and what the uh, Treasury markets are doing there, uh, because still they are the safest haven in the world, which is saying a lot, isn't it? It's saying a lot because the thing that caused the problem is actually the thing that everybody's running to. Mm. Who would ever imagine that the 10-year yield right now is 2.6, 2 and 5 eighths, when they actually caused the problem? But there's a lot of factors where it is yeah. still the safest investment. Do you want to put your money in Germany right now with the fear of uh, all the sovereign debt stuff going on? How about Japan? I think Japan's worse off than the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, you could always throw it to uh, yeah. China, but they want dollar-denominated, yeah. you know, events. So J just on that one, place to be. that's interesting. You know, Japan still, though, for all its ills, is a net creditor. Uh, the United States has lost that crown about 30 years ago. It, it, it sure has. And, and look what's happened. I mean, our yields have continued to go down. And I do believe at the end of the day that Japan is worse off than we are. Um, mm. There's some bargains to be had in the United States right now. Everybody's running away from the markets. This yeah. is probably a great time to get in because, boy, there are some bargains out there. But in terms of balance sheet repair, if this is why corporate America ain't going out on a hiring spree because it's trying to, I guess, uh, square some of that debt off the ledger. Well, Japan's had decades to do that. Are they not that much further ahead than you are, all things considered? That is correct. We're actually probably far behind because we, we don't have... We don't have a government that Come actually in. wants to oh, cut six, the deficit. One. They don't realize how Anything. big our entitlement so, problems are. Fun. We're giving a trillion six, dollars away, a, a trillion dollars a year away in entitlements. And uh, people just are too scared to, to make the hard decisions. So you are exactly correct. We need to do what you guys did back in the 1980s when you were facing the same problems. We just need to uh, just get some tough love right away, cut the deficit, cut spending, and uh, get the house back in order. Uh, hey, Larry, it's uh, Mark Bailey from uh, Quasia here. Where best do you see Treasury yields going from the moment? You mentioned that they're at 2.6% uh, at the moment. Do you see much uh, evidence that they're going to go any tighter? Do you think uh, any news from the Jackson Hole uh, synopsis that's coming up will, will drive those yields uh, potentially even tighter? Do you think there's any potential even for uh, in QE3? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question because I've been the outlier all along. I still believe that the 10-year yield is going to go lower for a lot of different reasons, but one that you just mentioned, the repeat of Jackson Hole, the repeat of QE3. Uh, the Wall Street Journal just came out this afternoon mm. with three ex-Fed officials saying, hey, a QE3 might be a good idea, however that looks. The White House, believe it or not, came out and said there's not going to be a double-dip uh, recession. Uh, <laughs> I, and just keep in mind, the White House has never been correct about that or never called a recession. It's, uh, I do believe yeah. that we're going to see... Two and a half to two and a quarter, no problem whatsoever. Where else are you going to put your money right now? Well, yeah, exactly. That's, it's a rhetorical question. Uh, the other issue would be uh, China propping up uh, the U.S. debt burden to such a degree, our largest foreign net buyer and all of that. But when it comes to China itself, if we just talk about copper, really interesting, because that's meant to be the global barometer of growth, is it not? And I guess, Larry, you're struggling to find any credibility in a lot of those figures when it comes to demand from China. It is. It, it, they've always been suspect. I mean, right now they said imp importation was down. Uh, mm. I, I'm, I'm sorry. They said the consumption was mm. up 18 percent year on year. Mm. I have a hard time believing that. I mean, I know that they're in a deficit. I know that we're in a contango market. Mm. But when you look at right now, it's really not because of demand. It's because of the lack of supply. The Chinese mm. are not buyers. They're very smart traders. Mm. And you know what? If the, if the price continues to rally, the SRB is going to come out and flood the market with copper bring it right down where it needs to be because keep in mind six weeks ago eight weeks ago copper was trading at 405 410 uh, a pound mm. and that's when they were buying the only people really buying copper right now are the funds and the CTAs and typically they're always wrong well that's interesting because is, is that a bit like the strategic oil reserves when you talk about the state reserve bureau uh, it goes into that market, but is it mandated to do that at any point or does it have to wait for certain prices to be struck before it can go, you know, enter? Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I wish I had that answer. It just gets to the point where uh, they are definitely in deficit. If it gets to the point where they need to buy copper, I think the first thing they will do is sell. I mean, uh, 433 right now, copper is resilient right now. It's down small today. Um, I can see if copper would rally to 450 a pound by the end of uh, yeah. this quarter, uh, that the mm. SRB would come out and flood the market. But right now, I'm seeing copper backing off a little bit to like mm. around 420 a pound. At that point, you might start seeing some casual interest from the Chinese. What's really worrying, Larry, was that you, you point to net imports into China falling in the first half by over 600,000 tons, but actual output on year rising 18%. Are you telling me they're either doing uh, more with less or they're simply uh, fiddling the books? Yeah, they're cooking the books, exactly correct. They're doing more with less, uh, living uh, hand to mouth at this point. And, and at the end of the day, I think that 18% number is highly suspect. They do the same thing with the corn market because I know I don't want to switch gears, but the corn uh, right now, um, cash delivered corn, in China is still about eight fifty nine dollars a bushel, but they reported to be much less than that. So mm. it's highly suspect. I think year on year growth is more towards eight to ten percent, mm. which still puts them in a deficit, which still is bullish long term for copper. All right. Uh, what about the long term uh, prospects for gold? Now you've got central banks, including South Korea, going into that market now for the first time in thirteen years. Uh, clearly, a signal that the U.S. dollar is starting to lose its uh, luster as uh, the currency of or at least the asset of choice for central banks so uh, they're becoming net buyers again of gold yeah and that happened about a month ago with mexico people thought they were crazy with the amount of gold they bought at 1475 dollars an ounce pretty smart, mm, pretty smart. Uh, korea is buying it to uh, augment fl uh, inflation and you and as long as central banks continue to do that the, uh, it's going to be a bullish tone for, uh, for gold. At the end of the day, you almost can't worry mm -hmm. about the price of gold. You have to think more about why are we buying it. And for me, if money is going to remain cheap, if there's going to be a QE3, if the ECB, in fact, is going to buy sovereign debt, what the heck? Why can't gold go up to $2,500 an ounce? I mean, it's a function of how cheap you think money is going to be. In Australia, um, you guys have the opposite problem with your currencies being very expensive uh, relative to everybody else. It's a good problem to have right now, I suppose. But uh, for the rest of us, we feel like money is cheap. It's going to get cheaper. Gold should continue to rally. The only thing um, I would say is that there seems to be a lot of demand support around $15, $50 an ounce. Technically speaking, if it should close below that, I would be very cautious to buy it and wait for a flush in the market. But right now, what the heck? Money is cheap. People are scared. Central banks are buying. I would still continue to buy gold. And what, Friday could be an excuse to rally even further on jobs? Uh, or is the market already pricing that one in, that it's going to miss the mark? 250000 on month is, uh, as we were saying earlier, uh, wishful thinking, is it not? It is very wishful thinking. I think you're right that it is priced in right now. We've had so much bad news come out, ISM, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If we get anything close to that, better than that 400 number, we're going to see a huge rally in the stock market. But most people are pricing it in, uh, looking for the worst case scenario. It's always a pleasure, Larry, to get your insights. Uh, thanks uh, on this occasion as Thank ever you. before. Larry Shover from Efficient Capital Management, CME in Chicago.